Hey everyone, uh, this is Ivo once again, Rainbow McLean for life, and I want to welcome everyone back for another action review, and for more West Snipes reviews, which uh, will be more on this channel, and today I'm actually going to review, discuss, and give my thoughts on another, which I think is another underrated flick that West Snipes did, and that's of course The Art of War, Do You Know Your Enemy? which came out in August 25, 2000. And suddenly this movie bombed at the box office. This was like $65 million, but it earned only $40 million. It bombed at the box office. It got terrible critic, critic responses. And like I said, this to me is underrated. Another underrated vs. Snipes film. And the movie that I enjoy. Actually, there are two seagulls out there. Another one which Wesley Snipes did. That movie was a piece of shit. And the third movie sucked even worse than the second one. But to me, uh, this movie is really good. Underrated. And it's a decent spy action thriller. And uh, another Wesley Snipes film that I enjoyed. And I remember when I actually bought, uh, when I was in high school, I bought the VHS tape from Wesley Snipes, uh, uh, for, of this film. For Wes Snipes, because I was a huge fan, and still I am. And yeah, I actually bought that time. It was the same, uh, the same poster I had to see on this Blu-ray. And of course, I'll show you the back. And Wes Snipes stars um, as Neil Shaw, which he actually is um, coolly e efficient, covered operative, working for uh, United Nations. And um, he's actually an agent, and he actually does not exist. And he's uh, he's United Nations, and he works for Eleanor Hooks. She works for um, Eleanor Hooks. She uh, works for she works for U.S. Secretary General Douglas Thomas for the United uh, United States, and um, she works in the UN, UN and. Uh, and she's the boss of Neil Shaw. And Neil Shaw, his cover to operate agent does, who does not exist. And, um, and uh, he's using uh, espionage and quasi-ethical tactics to secure peace and, co and cooperation. And that's what he's hired to do. And that's what he, uh, that's what he does to do. And... <clears throat> And the other war uh, takes the title of um, of the ancient Chinese text of the same name by war strateg strategist Sun Tzu. And if you remember Passenger 57, Wesley Snipes uh, was reading a book titled The Art of War. But he also accepted the role for this movie. And for Neil Shaw, Jet Li is supposed to play the character, but Wesley Snipes was writing to do then... So they replaced Jet Li with Wesley Snipes. And I don't think it will be that much cool. But still, I think it will be cool to have Jet Li as the, uh, as the main hero. But no, Wesley Snipes did a fantastic job. Which I'll talk more about this film. You know. But the, the story talks about is actually on Chinese uh, New Year's Eve. And of course, I wrote down because I can remember. <clears throat> I think it was... Um, I think it uh, actually was, um, 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 it was actually, um, um, It was actually on Chinese Year's New Year's Eve, which was actually a party uh, held by uh, Chinese um, uh, uh, Chinese business mogul David Chen, played by Kerry Hiroki Tagawa, and um, and of course Wesley Snipes, um, uh, Wesley Snipes who plays Neil Shaw, he uh, he goes and he uh, infiltrates uh, that party um, as one of the guests. And I actually love that, you know, when he talks to uh, one of those um, uh, American, uh, one of those Americans, uh, uh, diplomats, and <laughs> Gary Hugisa Tagawa says, You, sir, who are you? Me, I'm Eddie Murphy. <laughs> I was actually saying the open uh, video, 
uh, uh, Wesley Snipes is Eddie Murphy in The Art of War. <laughs> but he actually did um, imitate a really great Eddie Murphy in this movie. And he's, he, like I said, he uses tactics, espionage, and uh, quasi... Um, he, uh, and of course... Um, <clears throat> And of course, quasi ethical tactics to secure uh, to secure peace and cooperation. And um, and of course, Neil Shao is on a mission, and he blackmails um, uh, a South Korean uh, Mongol. And uh, that was of course um, uh, he goes and blackmails North Korean defense minister um, him into uh, mis uh, misappropriation. Of UN and money in exchange for continued negotiation with South Korea, uh, and that was actually uh, that's uh, one of the reasons because the um, <clears throat> because North Korean defense minister he rather put money for horse and for for weapon instead for the money for for poor. And Neil Shao is a good guy. He's a good guy, and he makes sure that that <clears throat> that, that the innocent people are protected. And he actually doesn't exist, but he uses a blackmail's uh, ethical tactics to secure peace, in, in, uh, which he works for UN, but he does not actually exist. And he uh, he makes sure that the guy, you know, that um, that Korea, North Korean defense minister keeps continuing negotiating with uh, for the North Korea. And instead, they try to track him down, and there are a few martial arts skills in which Wesley Snipes uses to defend himself against his opponents. And he jumps off the building. The guy goes and shoots him with a uh, with a machine gun, and one of the bullets hits, you know, um, the parachute and hits him right in the shoulder. And of course, um, Neil Shaw succeeded. You know the 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 um, the negoti ne nego uh, negotiating. Um, negotiations with uh, South Korea keeps continue. He uh, he uh, succeeded, and there's also a basketball court. This is the second time I see Wesley Snipes to to play a basketball since he was in um, in that movie uh, White Man Can Jump. This is the second time we see which he uh, which he plays with his friend. Um, Blind, played by Michael Bean. Yes, Michael Bean from the Terminator and Aliens is this is in this movie. Um, Rob, he plays uh, SAD agent Robert Bly, and he also works friend and uh, and partner of uh, of Neil Shaw. So Eleanor Hooks once again after six months later, Eleanor Hooks, um, she uh, uh, she is actually um, <clears throat> suspecting that. Ambassador Wu and uh, Chinese uh, Mongol, who's friends with uh, with Ambassador Wu, played by James Hong, you know David Chen, that uh, who uh, who helps um, who helps um, uh, who goes and helps. Um, Who who uh, who hits a banquet? You know who Chen hits a banquet. He uh, she suspect that uh, uh, Ambassador Wu and David Chen they're actually somehow connected with uh, Chinese g gang triads, and she um, and she uh, asks and sends Neil Shao on a suicide mission in which he has to. Uh, infiltrate in the party and plan on Ambassador Wu a back to find out uh, uh, the conversation what's going on. So one of Neil Shao's agents and um, co-workers, that's of course, um, <clears throat> uh, that's of course, uh, Agent Gina Frank, uh, Gina Novak, Agent Gina Novak. She goes and. Um, uh, Gina Novak, she goes and infiltrates to Ambassador Wu a back, but but that time um, Ambassador Wu is actually assassinated. He's been shot in the head, and another bullet hits David Chen, and uh, the uh, the assass assassination, you know, the assassin starts running away, and uh, Neil Shao goes and he's hunting him down, 
and um, and of course during the hunt, Neil Shaw is actually arrested for the murder of Ambassador Wu and David Chen by police, you know, in New York, and his uh, and his friend during the transportation because he doesn't exist and he's been framed now. Um, so during the transportation with police car. Uh, the police car, the, the, the van has actually been hit by uh, Chinese uh, by Chinese triads, um, triads and they uh, as, uh, they go and kill everyone except the, uh, except um, <clears throat> Neil Shao. During the riot, you know, um, they try to frame um, the the murder for the ambassador Wu and all the cops, you know, to Neil Shao, the triads. But Neil Shao wakes up and he goes, takes down all four of them. Um, he uh, actually think he takes down all three of assassins, and uh, he uh, he decides to track down his uh, friend agent uh, Gina um, Novak, and he finds uh, and he finds her uh, dead, and he goes and kills those two assassins. The other girl, um, she uh, uh, Julia. Uh, uh, Julia Feng, who worked as a um, um, as a translator for in the in the building for the UN, um, she she claims that um, uh, Agent Neil Shao he he's not the shooter, he's not the killer, and of course that actually happens, you know, and uh, of course during. Um, so now because he finds out that there is actually a film, there's a tape. You know what uh, um, David Chen and Ambassador Wu were talking. He visits her old uh, her old partner, her old colleague, and she's been assassinated, killed. So he tracks down uh, um, Julia Feng and finds out that Julia Feng and Neil Shaw were both set up and they're both targeted to be killed by triads because they want to kill them because they blamed you know everyone. Or, or they actually involved, you know, uh, in the murder of uh, Ambassador Wu, Chinese Ambassador Wu, and now, and now Neil Shao and um, and Julia Feng are now both wanted. They're both fugitives, and of course, um, Neil Shao saves her, and Julia Feng has no choice because her best friend is being killed, and the grandmother has been killed, and now she's been targeted. They try to kill her, not. Uh, uh, not Neil, and Neil saved her, you know, Neil went and he saved her, Shao saved her, and because she's probably back, they decide to do whatever it takes, you know, to stop them, um, to find out who's behind the conspiracy and why, and, um, <clears throat> and more closer they get, you know, they actually came uh, to the conspiracy, and because they now in the run, they actually both find out that Robert Ply is supposed to be dead, but you know, actually he wasn't dead, he was alive, and Eleanor Hooks was behind the conspiracy. The Neil Shaw's boss, she was behind the conspiracy. And uh, by the end, you know, um, uh, Neil Shaw, you know, who's been hunted down by FBI agent Capella, played by Maury Chaikin, uh, he starts, uh, Maurice Aiken later starts to believe that Wes Snipes is a good guy and he's not a shooter uh, and he tried to prevent the, uh, uh, the, that Ambassador Wu will be killed and he called that. And uh, he's been stuck in the conspiracy and he starts to believe him and he starts to uh, help, um, he starts to uh, help Neil Shaw. And in the building of the UN, um, it turns out that Ellen Hooks ordered, you know, that Ambassador Wu and David Chen are being killed because David Chen he was hit, you know, and um, because um, uh, Neil Shaw suspected that David Chu, David Wu, uh, David Chen, not David Wu, David Chen was behind everything. He goes to confront David Wu, uh, David Chen, but <clears throat> it turns out that that his injury was fake. He never was shot. He knew. The 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 ambassador who will be assassinated, and uh, of course, um, uh, Wes Snipes character Neil Shaw try to find out who was behind everything, who did that. Um, um, 
he uh, he actually did uh, trying to find out who um, <clears throat> who uh, with who David Chen was working for and that time David Chen has been hit right in the shoulder then in the head and the same killer who escapes and while um, uh, Neil Shaw who tried to go to the, the same alley he was in uh, he was in the opening film he tries to catch the, the, the assassin and when he finally does it turns out it was actually Robert Bly who fake his death and he was the one that killed um, <clears throat> He was the one that, 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 that assassinated Ambassador Wu. He faked his death and he killed and, um, and he tried to kill uh, Neil Shao. He, of course, he escaped now because he was, finds out that Ellen Hooks was behind everything. Um, and because, uh, uh, because um, Julia Feng went with evidence that David, uh, uh, David Chen was behind it, she finds she figures out that Ellen Hooks was working with David Chen. They were both working together to kill Ambassador Wu and uh, and of course to get to gain probably more power. You know, um, this kind of the plot is kind of confusing, like I said. But um, <clears throat> she's now hiding in the UN, and Robert Bly, her operative, is now searching for her. And Neil Shaw shows up, you know, and he starts uh, go and he starts fighting with. Robert Bly and of course um, of course they go and um, he fights Robert Bly on the end he kills him saves Julia Fink and um, and of course Eleanor Hooks then she gets killed because he finds the back in his shoulder uh, when he falls in the basketball court with Robert Bly and when he gets stitches in the back you know that was the back he put the back and, uh, and gives uh, try it, uh, and he gives you know the the visit card who's behind, who's actually uh, behind Ambassador Wu's death, and uh, of course um, it was Eleanor Hooks, and try it on the end they kill Eleanor Hooks actually she's been fired by um, when um, General Douglas Thomas played by Donald Sutherland finds this out he fires her and then she gets shot in the head you know he gets uh, she gets hit. Uh, by by a shot in the head by Chinese triads to get revenge, and uh, of course uh, Maori Chai can helps you know because uh, he goes and helps um, uh, Neil Shao's character you know to clear his name, but but because there's no evidence, they go and they assassinate versus Snipes. You know uh, he actually goes and. Uh, they, um, he helps you know Neil Shaw to fake his death, and um, on the end, <clears throat> Julia Fank is uh, now free because no one is hunting her down, and Neil Shaw goes and joins her, and of course then the movie ends. I forgot to mention that I found out the movie um, like hundred or uh, probably thirty uh, Vietnamese refugees uh, during Hong Kong shipment, you know. And that was kind of scary, really, when you see Maori Chai can stare in the bodies. With all the flies around it. Now, <clears throat> this is a solid, decent movie, and I would definitely put this one of top ten favorite vs. Knives films. It's a really decent movie. Um, I like this movie a lot. I did enjoy, it and I thought that this is the only good one of the three that they did. I like this movie a lot. Um, I also show you the back. You know, this is the scene in the alley when vs. Knives is trying to uh, catch the killer. The assassin, this is where he actually, by the finale, when he gets shot, killed, and uh, he, of course, Mori Chai can help him to fake his death. Um, that scene, this is the scene that did all together with Eleanor Hooks, played by Anne Archer, Donald Sutherland, he plays um, the, uh, US, UN Secretary General Douglas Thomas, and I think is I think this one is. Um, Kari Hiroki Tagawa, and this is the first scene uh, in which uh, in the opening scene on the uh, Chinese New Year's Eve. And I just love Wes Snipes in this movie because he's uh, serious. Now, uh, there's a the, this movie, uh, that time you know, there's no CGI in this movie or shaky cam. And when you see in the alley, you know, this is scene, uh, this scene when Wes Snipes is hunting down the killer who killed Ambassador Wu. 
and you see all the jumps, you know, like there's Ali, uh, which uh, the killer jumps off, that was a stuntment, wasn't Michael Bean, and uh, also when, uh, the guy who jumps uh, <clears throat> off the building, Lance, and uh, that wasn't Bessie Snipes, it was actually a stuntman. All the stunts are dangerous and real, and by many who were really timing and dangerous, it wasn't Wesley Snipes uh, or them. But the five scenes Wesley Snipes did, there's an action sequence in a hospital when Julia Fang goes and she uh, visits her friend who was killed. And there's actually this Chinese bitch, this Chinese woman, a hit woman, yes, a hit woman, uh, a, um, a serial killer, a hit woman. She goes and kills the, the poor old, old lady and the girl who was fighting for her life. And um, and she tries with a, with a silencer, she tries to kill Julia Fang. And Wesley Snipes shows up like a pure badass he is. And he goes, you know, kicks her with his, with his my gay, you know, because Wesley Snipes is actually second degree black belt in Hapkido and third degree black belt in uh, Shotokan Karate. And he uses my gay, kicks the woman's uh, weapon, kicks her with my gay, grabs her. Actually, no, he, he kicks her, he goes, he struggles with her, grabs her. And breaks her goddamn neck like a pure badass Wesley Snipes is. He breaks her goddamn neck. And I just love that because Wesley Snipes is not afraid to punch, you know. He's not afraid of anything. He's a pure badass. And if you watch Romeo Must Die with Jet Li, Jet Li was afraid to fight a Chinese hit woman. So he uses uh, Liak's uh, legs to defend himself. And this movie, Wesley Snipes, kicks the bitch ass. He grabs her, breaks her goddamn neck. And I love that in this movie. And there's another scene, eh, like in Blade, there's a little little girl starts fighting Blade. And he goes, kicks the sh living shit out of her. Well, in Meteor Man, you know, Meteor Man himself was afraid of a little kid uh, uh, using the high, flying kicks on him. So he uses... His, uh, his the, the that vision that Superman uses, you know, the, the in which he, uh, which uh, the guy, you know, flies, you know, a bow. But but Wesley Snipes is no afraid, you know, uh, to hit anyone, and that's what I love about Wesley Snipes. And I think the art of war is very underrated. Michael Bean is as on this film, he plays Robert Bly from Aliens, you know, he was uh, Corporal Hicks in that movie, he was in uh, The Terminator, he played Kyle Reese, and in this movie he plays uh, um, actually uh, FBI agent, you know, no, actually he plays um, SAD agent Robert Bly, uh, just like a cooperative like Wes Snipes, and yeah, the action sequence, there's also in the van when, um, or I think it was three or four uh, tried hitmans who killed everyone. Of course, Maori Chaiken with a vest, he survived, but all the cops were killed. And, and of course, you know, when they try to frame, you know, everything to Wes Snipes, Wes Snipes uses the, that long weapon, that long, uh, long uh, sniper rifle, kicks everyone's ass. And uh, one of those uh, guys, you know, those hitmans uses Beretta. And tries to shoot uh, Wesley Snipes, but hits his own driver in the van. And Wesley Snipes kicks everyone's ass, you know. And he escapes, jumps, uh, he goes and jumps on the truck. And the guy hits himself, gets killed. Practical effect. And Wesley Snipes, you know, he he really did, he had the fun with this movie. He, I really enjoy watching him, you know, kicking his ass. Now, few problems I do have with this film. Um, actually nitpicks, it's called nitpicks, but a few problems. Now, one of my problems is that I don't understand why the heck, uh, he actually, um, he actually, uh, uh ask, uh, the, uh, this police officer, this FBI agent, Capella, to help him to, um, <clears throat> to fake his own death. I don't get why. Why he didn't, Neil Shaw shows up, you know, and he says to, to uh, Secretary General Douglas Thomas, and puts, you know, that he worked for Eleanor Hooks, and, uh, you know, and I wish that the try that, that this world continue, and he will say, you know, the, the, it's not over, and uh, just like, you know, I actually miss the 80s a lot more, because in Avenging Force, you know, I love when Michael Dudikoff says, you know, the, the Pentagon just started, and so am I, so am I, I wish that Resistance would say such a badass cool lines, but that, but that was just lazy shit in writing, 
I wish that he will show up, you know, in that tune in to talk to General Thomas and says, you know, I'm just starting. And the guy that framed me, it's not over. I just wish that, but that didn't happen. That actually didn't happen in the film. The ending sucked. Could have been much better ending, in my opinion. Um... And I also kind of miss that Wesley Snipes could have done more, uh, could have done, uh, say, more cooler, cooler lines. I miss that. I wish, uh, one, one, another problem is the music score. You know, the music score was by side, some guy, um, um, <clears throat> Norman Corbell. Cor Cor which kind of sucked that the soundtrack, you know, the music score sucked, called him a much better music soundtrack. I miss the 80s, called him a much better music soundtrack. And also, why the fuck was Neil Shaw staying with that, with that girl on the end of the film? I don't get it. Why? You know, the ending, in my opinion, kind of sucked. But the action sequence is really great. When Wesley Snipes uh, actually was a stuntman who was driving with that, uh, uh, with that uh, motorcycle, um, and when the camera shows up, you know, the, the stunt may crash the motorcycle when camera shows up, you know, the paper. But still, it wasn't a CGI. And Wes Snipes was still in the film because next to goal, he was missing. He wasn't in the film at all. But in this movie, is a really good one. I mean, this is the last, really the last good one. This was before, uh, before Wes Snipes did Blade 2. And he still... He still did a good job. I mean, the fight, the action sequences, the fight sequences are in the film. Um, and a lot of the best knives, you know, he tries to be uh, more serious, you know. And uh, Kerry Hukao Tagawa asks him, and, and you, sir, who are you? Me, I'm Eddie Murphy. <laughs> but he looks like a badass in this film. And yes, Kerry Hukao Tagawa and uh, Wesley Snipes, they both worked in... Uh, um, um, uh, uh, Rising Sun, they both worked together in Rising Sun, they actually collaborated the second time, and I think it was the last time they actually collaborated together, and Kerry Hyuki Tagawa, he was a bad guy in Shota Little Tokyo which I reviewed that film but, yeah, Michael Bean was in this movie and actually did a good job, Donald Sutherland was in this movie, and actually has a good cast in the film now, this uh, Blu-ray, you know um, excellent snacks, it's a combination Shaft and James Bond martial arts at its best the, the martial arts uh, scenes are really good one with Wes Snipes kicking his butt. And like I said, my favorite scene would be on hospital when that bitch, you know, and uh, Wes Snipes uses my gay, kicks her, uh, kicks her, uh, where, kicks her gun, decides her, kicks her, and fights, struggles and grabs her, and breaks her goddamn neck, and I love that scene. Eh? That was a really good scene. Eh? Um... But kind of this movie, you know, is kind of espionage thriller. It kind of feels like uh, a Mission Impossible from Tom Cruise. Um, when, <clears throat> when when Wesley Snipes, you know, he's running and tries to catch the assassin. And um, he talks to the Bly. And uh, Bly, Bly, he hears shots. And Bly is snousing. Uh, he keeps screaming. And then he's dead. And Wesley Snipes gets captured. But this is kind of similar in which, uh, uh, in Mission Impossible, Ethan Hunt's team has been killed. And we see, you know, when uh, Kid Reed, uh, the, uh, when uh, Jim Phelps shot himself, you know, and see all the blood, and he, and Ethan Hunt is too late when he see his mentor fall down the water, which uh, is kind of, kind of is similar, you know, to that scene. Eh? Kind, it kind of looks like Mission Impossible. Also, this movie is rated R, directed by Chris, Christian Duguay. He did a good job. Um, screenplay by Wayne Beach and Simon Davis Barry, and it was also a story by Wayne Beach. Wayne Beach, not Beach, Beach, Wayne Beach. Um, but yeah, um, <clears throat> and of course, uh, <clears throat> but the film's title refers to the ancient Chinese text, so the same name by war structures at San Tzu, so that's really good. Um, yeah, actually, it was $60 million, not 65 but $60 million. But this sadly really... Um, um, but this actually really, really bombed at the box office. You know, it really bombed at the box office. Um, but that really actually um, really bombed at the box office. Um, But yeah, that really bombed 
and the box office. Um, uh, also now the Blu-ray, a kinetic wall-to-wall -wall action movie. This has special features, theatrical trailers of this and other great Morgan Creek, uh, Morgan Creek movies. In this minus scene access and that's it. Subtitle English. There's nothing. There, there's nothing making of the film or any interviews. There's nothing about the film. Um, but it's only almost two hours. But in my opinion, it's fast paced. And yeah, it doesn't have much to say, but I like this film, another another favorite movie that Wes Snipes did, and definitely one of his underrated flicks. Sadly, the next two sequels suck, but yeah, I thought this was really a damn good film, underrated and solid film. Um, if you haven't seen For Wes Snipes, I think you have to have this movie in Blu-ray, um, because I do have this in collection, and I enjoy this film. The sequel, I'm not a fan. I used to have the DVD, but I threw it in the dumpster because it was so bad. Um, I will review that uh, that movie today too. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna review the third one because the third one is is not very nice. And I'm only gonna give my thoughts on the sequel. But that's it. That's my movie review on the Art of War for Versus Snipes. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next review. So take care. I'm out. Bye-bye.